Hi guys, it is a gloomy, drizzly Sunday here in the drought-plagued and flood-ravaged wasteland of South Austin, Texas. Uh, Sunday, I believe, October 27th, 2013. And so, Sunday is the day that I come at you, old, your old doomsday preacher, Hambone Little Tail, coming at you with my latest favorite Bible of the Apocalypse, and this is the second Sunday in a row, and I will probably be coming at you for the next two Sundays after today with what quite possibly this is the number one most intelligent book I have read in the year 2013, Wasted World, How Our Consumption Challenges the Planet by an ecologist out of the Netherlands named Rob Hengeveld. I had never heard of this guy. Me, ham on little tail, eco-Nazi, doomsday prophet, environmental alarmist, and the chronicler of the downfall of global industrial civilization has never heard of this man who, in this book uh, I, from a couple years back, spells out exactly what is going on on this planet. And uh, I went on for 44 minutes last week. I've got a clock with me, so I will wrap this up at 30 minutes uh, if my video card doesn't. And I'm just going to pick up where I left off. What I, what I quickly started learning as I'm moving through this book, what this, this guy's MO in this book is what he does is he goes through all of these, he breaks down all of these environmental catastrophes unfolding on this planet. He starts with a specific example out of his own life. He goes on from there to explain the problem, what is going on, and then at the end of every chapter, what he does as he looks for what is really going on. And you start to figure out his game. And guess what? Chapter after chapter after chapter after chapter of doing this, it ends almost the same. That in every single case, what he tells you is the reason for this problem or this problem or this problem or this problem is overpopulation and overconsumption, the twin evils. It is too many people eating too much stuff, as Ted Turner will tell you. This is a 300 pages uh, of, of explaining too many people eating too much stuff is exactly what is wrong on this planet. Okay, and since the video card cut me off at the last, I'm going to pick up from where I left from agribusiness and corporate states. We are caught in social, economic, political, moral, and religious nets, networks of growth, depletion and pollution, networks of organization and planning, networks of institutions and organizations, large and small, local and global, networks of abstraction and alienation, networks of speculation and networks of hope. We put our trust in fighting the symptoms rather than fighting the root cause, the root cause of every problem on this planet, which is our two large numbers and growing demands. Once, thousands of years ago, we chose a path to escape from the problems of too many people thousands of years ago, yeah. But the path proved worse than circular. It has spiraled downward, bringing us into ever greater difficulties, and we, need, we now need to solve this problem, the problem of too many people eating too much stuff, as quickly as possible. 
during the 1970s, we were warned at explicitly at a time when we still had the chance to find reasonably easy solutions. But since then, the world population has almost tripled, our demands have increased, and our supporting infrastructures have grown. The, the system, the global industrial civilization system has, has skyrocketed. This means that the size of the problems now facing us has also more than tripled since then. He's talking about when the limits of growth was written in 1972. We need to act quickly, not only because of the ever-increasing size of our problem, but also because after having lost so much valuable time, we are getting ever closer to the point of resource exhaustion and smothering in our own waste. And he continues to go from there. Here's his treatise on peak oil, then to limited resources, and then on the chapter man-made waste. Uh, this goes on and on. So jumping ahead to the end of the chapter on man-made waste. And guys, this will start to sound kind of redundant. So what I'm going to do is go through all these chapters and get to the end of the chapters until uh, and I'm going to run out 30 minutes. Man-made waste. Okay. Uh, for several reasons, we have to take any loss of the remaining environment seriously. We cannot afford to lose any part of our environment anymore, especially because the population and societies of humans on Earth will keep growing for at least another half century. Yeah, yeah right. And in that time, in the, in, in the next 50 years, half as much again of the present number of humans will be added to the world's population blah 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 while all that time we will keep adding non-decomposable waste and pollutants year after year all that time we are wasting the land the water the air that is the environment on which we depend our demands and waste will grow much more than the number of people alone. A large part of the world's population is currently lagging behind relative to the more demanding and wasteful Western world. And the most populous countries, primarily India and China, will increase their resource use and hence their production of waste and their per capita resource use and waste production will develop along the same lines as those of us in the West. This means that in the coming years we will need still more of the existing resources and will require more land for the production and to store the non-composable waste they leave. And these areas of occupied land and wasteland will grow, leaving less and less to serve as a basis for our further existence. Meaning human beings' further existence on this planet. Our wasteful use of resources means that we are wasting our human world, wasting all that we have built up in society through the past millennia, the past six million years of existence on Earth, and all of our opportunities in the future. We are wasting, in fact, the amazing results of 
billions of years of biological evolution leading up to the origin of humanity and to our own unique level of civilization, the variety of all our different cultures. Are you hearing this, man? Nothing less than this is at stake with too many people eating too much stuff. From this perspective, the various ways of turning our resources into waste of their production and its deposition into our environment are only details of this larger and deeper kind of wasting our uniquely human opportunities of living, of enjoying and understanding our world, <clears throat> its past and its future, the way it works, and our unique existence in the universe. That is what we are wasting by our carelessness, our reckless throwing around of trash, by leaving deep trails from our heavy machinery and soft marshy soil, which I can see from where I'm sitting in this, uh, Jimmo's tractor running up and down, uh, plowing up all of this waste in my own backyard. Uh, by polluting the soil and the groundwater, by dumping billions of tons of poisonous gases into the water and the air, by warming the Earth's climate. We are wasting our future, wasting our world, wasting this beautiful life on Earth and our earth is wasting away wasted world how our consumption challenges the planet too many people eating too much stuff okay now from when it's gone it's gone uh, as I say I'm not gonna have time I'm just and, and guys you're gonna start re noticing a repetitive theme I'm jumping to the end of chapter after chapter until I hit 30 minutes okay the end of his chapter when it's gone it's gone all right how does this all boil down as the hunter-gatherer populations grew, it became necessary to settle permanently, then to organize the settlement, and so on, requiring <coughs> ever more people and material, material use and reducing the number of places still unaffected by our waste. Population growth required and requires further population growth. It required growth in material and energy use, which in turn introduced a self-accelerating growth of social and economic organization. At present, our vast and complex global socio-economic superstructure is growing even faster than the human population itself, requiring more and more people. More, faster, stronger, and more automated machines, more energy, more chemicals, thus both population and socionomic growth are self-accelerating and on top of this are enhancing one another's growth rates. This is not rocket science. This is basic ecology with how does, does uh, civilization and the economy play into this. This guy is drawing the dots. Okay, socioeconomic growth can not be stopped or brought back 
to more amenable proportions by us being more economical or by introducing recycling of materials while leaving our numbers to grow or even to stabilize at the current level of 7 billion. Uh, people think if we stop here, even if we even if we cut it off at se at seven billion, th this this planet is gonna crash. This all follows from the basic linear way of processing our resources. It's the linearity of the system which makes growth unavoidable and hence unstoppable unless there this is the one way there is one way to turn this train uh, around guys unless we manage to control its basic driving force the growth of our numbers and our personal demands are you, are you starting to get it yet? I mean, the guy says it a hundred times. Okay. Proponents of the cradle-to-cradle -cradle principle isolate our problems from the, their central driving force, our growing numbers accompanied by our growing demands per head. They negate the basic physical law of entropy. What is speeding up our wasting of our world is a combination of several processes that lead to energy depletion, to the depletion of plant nutrients and water, to deforestation and its consequent problems of erosion and inundation and to problems of weeds and diseases. All are issues that are discussed in this book and he breaks these all down coming up chapter after chapter, issue after issue with the same no-brainer conclusion. What is the dot? connecting every one of these issues in our wasted world. The way we use energy and material resources is wasteful, so in the end, we will have to pay the price. We are degrading the physical organization of those resources and are dissipating them faster and faster with out thinking about our long-term future. No shit, Sherlock. But the price of our profligacy will have to be paid by future generations. That if we don't pay for it, it is your children and your, your darling little grandchildren who are going to be paying the price. All right, they're going to pay the price without them having gained anything from it. We will leave them, our children and grandchildren, we will leave them with very little. Soon, energy and resources will be irretrievably gone, degraded, and dissipated. Okay. It looks like I'm probably going to finish my 30 minutes up with just one chapter. For any, for any of you who do not understand this and don't want to listen to this dumb hippie, uh, eco-Nazi, would you, would you listen to a, a university-trained ecologist trying to spell this out for any of us? Okay. When large numbers of individuals of any species plant or animal. Good God, can you see these invasive species around me while I'm, while I'm bringing this to you? Live close, to, close together. Their standard of living and ultimately their eventual local survival are affected. And this applies to us too. We, meaning humans, 
are no exception from any other species, plant or animal on this planet. And unless we take measures ourselves to reduce our reproduction and consumption and he's talking from a personal to a global level if we do not start taking the elephant in this room seriously and we do not come up with ways to reduce our reproduction and consumption we will inevitably feel the consequences guys we're already feeling the consequences these consequences are beyond the capacity of each of us as individuals to deal with how many rants have i had about this there is not a god damn thing you or i or anyone on this planet as individuals can do to turn around this train and although self-limitation in reproduction he is talking on a global scale will often be difficult if not painful the consequences of not curtailing our reproduction will be far worse far worse obviously our growing numbers are closely intertwined with the depletion of our resources of food, energy, and materials, generating waste and pollution, and the problems of large-scale recycling. Although recycling can only be a marginal and temporary measure, it still must become a central activity just as it has become central to all chemistry within and between organisms. But with the exhaustion of our resources in sight, humankind will be forced to eke out its existence by recycling, even though this will use up more and more of our dwindling energy supply. That's a whole nother rant about how much fossil fuels it goes into recycling. Uh, it's not enough, guys. Okay, I've got uh, I've got about eight more minutes, I think, here. So I'm just going to jump to one more. Of it, but see if you start noticing a recurring theme. Okay, on this chapter, our fresh water is running out. And I guess I'll wrap it up here cause it, and, and pick up next week. Okay. From the end of our fresh water is running out. Okay. Uh, the scarcer and more polluted fresh water becomes. The higher the temperatures and the higher the cost of energy to pump it up, purify it, transport it, blah, 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 the, the more expensive it will become. This may jeopardize the production of food and make the food that can be produced much more expensive, thus growing out of reach of millions of the poor. Therefore, not only can we expect a crisis to occur in the production of energy and some irreplaceable minerals, but also one due to water shortages. Okay, like our food in several ways, both directly and indirectly, the availability of fresh water as an essential resource is becoming intertwined with the availability of fossil fuels and the use of those fossil fuels connects with the warming of our climate which in turn itself reduces the availability of both our food and our drinking water gee this forces us into a vicious circle, a downward spiral 
driven by the fossil fuels, which are running out at the same time as our fresh water is running out. Yet, ultimately, ultimately, of course, of course, see how close we're getting to the end of this chapter? Ultimately, of course, it is the increasing number of people giving all of these problems, no matter what the problem is, it is the increasing number of people giving all of these problems of overuse, depletion, and the production of waste and pollution. Basically, each of us, each and every one of us, needs to be fed, watered, dressed, housed, and to move about, and we all want to improve on what we already have. And we all reproduce. Well, not all of us. Not this dumb hippie in a chair and a few other people who get it. And don't put this one on me, Rob. I got my vasectomy at age 22. Okay. And we all or most of us, 99.99% .99 of us, reproduce demanding more, ever more. Not only should the problems in our present global society that are coming up as a result uh, of, this, of this be stated integrally, but their solutions must be tackled integrally as well from their very basis onward and take a wild guess what the very basis of every one of our problems are according to Rob Hengeveld. Our growing, already unsustainable already unsustainable population. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Rob, that will end this week's sermon from my number one new favorite Bible of the Apocalypse, Wasted World. If you read any book in the year 2013, it needs to be Wasted World by Rob Hengeveld for any of you who don't get it. And I will wrap up this week's Doomsday Sermon because I got to get out of here because another hero of mine, Alan Wiseman, is going to be giving a free talk right here in Austin, Texas about his new Bible of the Apocalypse called Countdown. Countdown. So I need to get out there and I'm going to hopefully Alan will uh, let me video his talk, his lecture, and I will uh, put that uh, video on tonight when I get back. But for Hammond Little Tail and Rob Hengeveld, Bye, guys.